live from the simulation of a nightmare that we all live in, month two of coronavirus quarantine. It's St. Riot doing invasions in Sin's Fortress. Uh, I thought it would be fun to try, like, I was going to, like, you know, see if Sekiro could get some invasions in Sin's Fortress. One of the first ones I got was this group, and I am so shocked to discover there's another invader here. No one. You never come across these anymore in any of the games. Dark Souls 3, you know, a little bit, but not as often as it used to, and definitely not Dark Souls uh, Remastered. A dried fingered group. There's an item in Dark Souls, if you didn't know. It's called the Dried Finger, and what does it do? It allows you to summon an extra phantom at the cost of you can get invaded by a second invader. It never happens, except for, like, you know, in Ulusil, uh, like, or maybe the woods, or in Orlando occasionally, like, real heavy gank areas. Areas where, where people pop that dried finger, they summon up three of their buddies, and they're just looking for invaders to, like, spawn camp and kill. It's nice to know the lock-on still sucks, but look at the firebomb into the verticality true combo coming off the assist of the pendulum. Glorious. So this other invader, his name was BS, which I'm guessing is, you know, backstab, because it's Dark Souls 1. I don't know who this person was. At one point, I swap over from character names to PSN names because I wanted to see who this guy was so I could send him a message and be like, hey, good game. Uh, I had so much fun invading this group. The host's name was Chad, and he had two phantoms, always one phantom with him. Uh, and then sometimes they had another phantom. Basically, we kept these dudes from getting into Sin's Fortress for, like, an entire night. It was glorious. At this point, when that dude hit me, and when this, the host hit me, when Chadley uh, hit me there with his Black Knight Sword, I realized these dudes were probably closer to level 50 with plus 10 weapons than they were 30 with plus 5 weapons. And that is, some of you ask me how, you, how I get so many invasions in these games. The secret is knowing what level range you should be for each area as well as what weapon upgrade range you should be in for each area. So if you want to find invasions, you have to know how those two things work. Soul level matchmaking and weapon upgrade matchmaking. Uh, you cannot invade someone if you're much higher level or have a much higher weapon upgrade than them. Um, the game just won't let you do it. So my, my partner, BS got defeated, and he got the double point down from, from these two. Now, that Black Knight Glaive always hits hard, but this dude uh, overleveled as hell. Like, it hits real hard. So I have swapped over to the Hornet Ring to try and backstab this dude off of the bridge here, but unfortunately, he survives. You can see I'm pumping out, like, less than 200 damage on a Hornet Ring backstab. Uh, his damage is insane. The Black Knight Sword damage is insane. And rest in peace. John Sekiro never stood a chance, but it's all right. Because, as I mentioned before, I was pretty sure these dudes were higher level than my John Sekiro build, so I switch over to my Slag Knight, which is level 44 with plus 10 weapons. All weapons are Raw Infused plus 5, or Chaos Infused plus 0, and that is the equivalent of a plus 10 weapon. So. I invade these guys again, this time I've got more HP, I've got more stamina. Um, my builds are never like super efficient. They're not like the most unefficient thing in the world because most of them have some sort of, uh, you know, in-game gimmick or lore to them or whatever. But this guy is way more suited for dealing with gankers. So BS manages to kill one of the phantoms. And then he flips himself right off the, the, the bridge there and into the hole and kills himself, unfortunately. But Fire Tempest! Oh god, Fire Tempest! Just smokes that host! 
and they don't make it to the rolling balls, but we're not finished. We still have more to go. Don't let the ink dry on this character's birth certificate because he is not making it out alive. So this is round three, and the fire tempest in the doorway gives me a, a, an HP check on that overleveled phantom. I'm assuming uh, that his armor is like max upgraded. He doesn't take a shit ton of damage from me, which is to be expected. Uh, even though he's been downscaled by the password thing, um, it's not like a foolproof thing, you know. They're, they're still going to be pretty uh, OP. Fortunately, BS invades again, and we have these two. This time they don't have their third phantom with them. And one of the things I love so much about Dry Finger, two invaders versus, you know, all the phantoms, is it's especially in Dark Souls Remastered. If you know more about the game, if you understand how the game works, more than your opponent, if you have a better understanding of how this game works than your opponent, it is hard for them to beat you. <laughs> And I don't like to say that, like, you know, invaders to me are not just griefers or trolls or whatever. There's, there's a nuance to it. I, but at this point, that's kind of what this becomes. We are just stopping these dudes from ever making progress. And I love it. They're putting up a fight! Don't get me wrong. I, I'm gonna talk shit about them, but I appreciate that they came in here ready to do this dried finger. They came in here ready to fight invaders. And yeah, their their plan wasn't the best, but I guarantee you <laughs> they learned something. Probably learned how to get that ass whipped. What are we at? Round four? Round five? I don't know. But it keeps happening. <laughs> and I love it. And I'm here for it. We're ready to do this. I mean look, there's a there's a pandemic going on right now what else are you going to be doing let's let's go invade dark souls remastered and stop some nerds from making any progress in sin's fortress black flame is going to break this dude's poise and there is nothing he can do to stop me <laughs> also he has a fat roll so like i can roll catch him with black flame easy peasy and I hit him with the Lloyd's Talisman at the very start. He's never going to get a chance to heal. I have no idea where the host is. My buddy BS shows back up. Uh, but the host, this time, has decided that he's just going to like risk it, I guess. And he just ran off into the level to try and do it without his friend. Uh, which is actually like how they make the most progress, if you can believe it. By splitting up into different groups and making us hunt them. <laughs> All throughout Sin's Funhouse. All night. All night. So Chad here gets knocked off the bridge by the pendulum. I'm laughing my ass off in real time. But I could see the other phantom was up on the bridge fighting the first uh, Flamberge snake lady caster. So I'm I, I'm making a beeline. I'm ready. But... Um, Uh, that phantom isn't the only dumbass in Sin's Fortress today. No, no, no. I'm here as well. But it's fine. Because this is maybe one of my favorite Dark Souls Remastered kills that I have ever gotten in my entire life. So it is worth. First off, I go for the throwing knives to knock him off the ladder. But that doesn't work. Uh, because I know why it didn't work. I should have taken a step back every time I threw a knife. But I didn't. We're swapping to the Hornet Ring. Because I know when I get to the top of this ladder... That phantom is going to wallop me with that Black Knight Glaive. So we're also prepared to toggle escape. As soon as I get to the top of this ladder, I'm going to toggle escape and backstab this son of a bitch so hard. Oh, it's glorious. Backstab into verticality, true combo. Cue up that Jim Ross, Jerry the King Lawler commentary. After that... Who knows what happens. <laughs> BS was back, by the way. <laughs> but we're not finished. We're still not finished. This time, however, I spot the gold phantom. He's alone by himself. 
I have no idea where the balls are rolling, so I have to kind of be careful here, but seeing him here gives me an idea. If I can get to the top of Sin's Fortress, I can move those balls around, and we can really give these dudes hell. This is one of the things that's awesome about Sin's Fortress, uh, and Dark Souls 1 in general, is just the ability to actually use the level uh, as a weapon against your opponents, and it rules. Uh, <laughs> during these invasions, um, I was I was hanging out in uh, Incognito stream on Twitch. He was fighting Lady Maria at Blood Level Four with the threaded cane only, uh, as he has been doing for the past month or so. Uh, and lo and behold, I get some some good news, and Pinko, who has stopped streaming, <laughs> decided. I was, I was telling him all about what a great time I was having in Sin's Fortress, and Pingo decided to stop by uh, and, and try and get in on this. And he did, which was great. What wasn't so great was I think Pinko was trying to like set a trap here, or just trying to figure out why these balls were moving in the way they were, and uh, I kind of spooked him, and... <laughs> How will he get out of this one? Stay tuned. So I'm looking around, I finally find two of them, uh, the host is setting off his Chaos Storm, he's got Chaos Storm, he's got the Grave Lord uh, Sword Dance, he's got all the area of effect spells. Um, I run up here to check the balls, and lo and behold, it's Phantom number two. Black Flame is an excellent guard break against shields. Uh, this dude panics a little bit. And this is a, a pretty quick fight. And there's one guy down. Now, I know where the host and the phantom were. So, I adjust the balls one more time. Make sure they stay that way, because these things have a tendency to move around on their own. And then I'm back to try and find the host and the phantom. And I'm kind of hoping Pinko has found them as well. I can hear something. I can hear them fighting something. But I don't see it at all. But I do find Pinko. He managed to survive somehow. His character, the Xanthus Scholar, has enough HP to make that drop, I guess. And then find his way back. This, interestingly enough, the most progress these dudes made was when they split off into all these different groups and made it hard to like wrangle them. Uh, unfortunately for the host, I saw his health bar as he made his way down here. And now he's stuck between uh, a rock and a hard place. Uh, completely redeeming himself for falling off of Sin's fortress earlier when I spooked him by sneaking up on him. <laughs> and then one more. It, I, this was, my last one <laughs> regardless of the outcome I had to it was it was getting late but man what a what a bunch of fun we had uh, I'm getting ready for the the sneaky plunge attack here Pinko invades again with uh, that Xanthus blade did I call it the Xanthus scholar earlier if so I yeah look whatever <laughs> we're ready to do this <laughs> unfortunately my plunge attack fails this guy's this guy's wizened up. He doesn't come all the way out. But it's fine. Lloyd's talisman right off the start. And then the he, this this guy just popping off that Grave Lord sword dance way too early. However, he does absolutely nail me with Firestorm. Not enough damage though. And then from there, oh it's super simple, baby. The double point downers absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Uh, you love it. You love to see it. Chad will never make it through Sin's Fortress. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Later, y'all. <laughs>